What's up, everybody? I am the Uncanny Omar, and today we're going to be looking at the Marvel solicitations for 2023, January of 2023. That is crazy. We uh, we are that far ahead in the solicits. So thank you all so much for joining me and us. And who is us? To my right is Curtis from the Epic Marvel Podcast. Tell me a little. Hello, bit everybody. That. Well, I have a great podcast that I well, I just talk about classic Marvel comics all the time. Just search for Epic Marvel Podcast on any social media, and uh, I'm I'm sure you'll find me. Okay, and below us is Lars, formerly from Wizard Comics Magazine, and currently Norwegian Press. Oh, he and he's on mute. That's okay. I did a good introduction. You did wonderfully. Uh, I Yes, I'm Lars Pearson, uh, formerly of Wizard Magazine, currently of Mad Norwegian Press. Uh, it's always a great pleasure to be here. And, you know, I, I, I think in a world gone mad, you know, Omar, y you and us as your commentators, you're just a purveyor of joy and happiness. Well, well, in a thank world you. gone mad. Like, you know, Hestia was the goddess of the hearth, okay? Mm -hmm. It got home and, and warmth and, and joy and food. And I, I feel you're like that. You know, you... We, you and us by extension, present all these comics. Uh, the mere hope of buying gives people great joy. I, you know, I'll be honest with you, and, and thank you, SX, uh, for the super chat. And my mm -hmm. goodness, yes, new warriors for life, baby. I'll be honest, man. Like, one of the things that I remember looking at solicitations, and I don't know if anybody else was like this, but if I was having a rough day at work yeah. and out of nowhere the solicitations came out. And mm -hmm. I got to looking at them. It gave me, I don't want to say hope, but maybe it was hope that things are going to get better no matter what. That there's this crappy X-Men story that's going to be collected in under this format <laughs> one day. And, you know, I can't wait to get my hands on it. You know, that's that was the feeling that I got. And every time I get an email from David with like the latest stuff, which I just got a list of Omnis and Epics and getting to announce those i think some people have shared that feeling with me like you know i've been having a bad week or a bad month and it's really cool to to, to be a part of that so thank, yeah. uh, thank you thank you for that yeah i mean i'm I mean, i'm being a little schmaltzy but i'm being actually quite sincere i mean i i think it does spread a lot of joy and happiness and also in today's world where uh, releases are getting delayed by 3 or 6 months there's even more joy uh in that you know there's even longer that you can look forward to actually getting these books um but yeah and i'm yeah. a pleasure and when I was I, a when I was a kid, um, my brother and I we'd we'd bike to the local comic book store to pick up our comics and stuff. And uh, not every comic book store did this, and I don't know if they did it in your area, but they gave away the previews magazines, like the thick thick catalogs, for free. And oh. uh, so we'd get one every month, and we just have a great time together, going through every page, to look at every single comic that was in that magazine in yeah. the, in the big catalog. Yeah, great, good times, good memories. Um, yeah, quickly before we get going here, I, I I do miss the days when there you know there was no internet, there was no solicitations, and when you walked into a comic book store or even the grocery store rack, when you saw that cover for the first time, um, cold, it was just, it was just electrifying, you know. Um, and, and I do miss that, but you know that's the modern world in which we live. Uh, now you get that, but you just get that during Omar's videos. Yes, yes. Now, now you still get that. You just now get it months and months and months in advance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you get them little by little. They're, they're not all at one time, which yeah. I mean, I, and some people can wait for that. The, 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 the I'm going to get that feeling in this this very video, in this stream. Because yes. Omar oh, told yeah, me I that... forgot. So I, I think there is an epic collection here that we haven't announced. I can't. Yeah. I can't remember announcing not it. I knew about it. it. Better be new. I'm going to be very disappointed if it's not new. I can't remember. He hasn't it. told me. It's going to be a surprise. It's it's yeah. been crazy in the household. We uh, my my wife lost uh, her grandmother, so oh. we had to you know oh. do the visitation, oh. the the funeral, and then uh, family was in town, and then we're going to New York Comic Con next week. So everything is a blur in my head. My kids are out next week for fall break, and I have to be ahead on my videos. Mm -hmm. So I'll be honest with you. I cannot remember what I've announced and have now. now. Good. Good. So, wow. Yeah, that um, is a lot. And we have a giveaway. We have a huge giveaway this Saturday that we're prepping for. So 
yeah, it's it's been quite a quite a ride. That's for sure. Um, are you taking the kids with you or or leaving them at home? Nope, just Melanie and I. Yeah. Good. I mean, you love your children, but it's nice to leave them behind sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> she said exactly. Let's just uh, let it let it let let us have fun, you know, because right. um, she needs it too. She's she's on fall break from teaching, and um, me, I'll be working, but her, she can go and have fun. All right. Um. Before getting started, though, I do want to thank the folks at Marvel and David Gabriel for putting all this together for us. Yeah, this you, will Marvel. be available here in the next couple of weeks at every outlet. I'm not even sure. Newsrama is Games Radar now. Is that correct? I think that's who they are. CBR. Uh, all these places will have it eventually. So, but Omar, you should never have started a family. I mean, there, there was that other option, right? <laughs> well, they're expensive for one thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, and if you're interested in our giveaway, that giveaway is this Saturday, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on our Patreon and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here on this YouTube channel. So let's get started, gentlemen, with – let me make sure that I get this a little bit bigger because I think I usually have it at about 200 is what people like it at. All right. And by the way, the, uh, somebody just mentioned the delays. Uh, yes, they have been killer, but the Omnis are coming. Like, yeah. they're coming hard. Uh, <laughs> no, because, uh, yeah, 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 don't uh, take that out of context. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> confident it will all get here eventually, but I have saved. October is, is, is huge. Yeah, but I've saved a lot of money like in the last month because they've refused to give me books to buy because they're pushing them off. So, yeah. Yeah, the epics are the same way. They're, September's very light. October is loaded with yeah. like six six or seven of them, I think. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, yeah, October's huge. November's huge. So, okay. So, we're kicking it off with solicitation for Thor. Volume four. This is the classic Thor era, and this comes out in May. So even though it's solicited for January, that gives retailers enough time to order and pre-order. So this is the Mighty Thor. You have the Busema cover here, and the uh, I think that's Gil Kane, isn't it? Yeah, Gil Kane cover. Yeah. And a hundred dollars, seven hundred eighty-four pages, collecting Thor one ninety-five to two twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. Material from Marvel Treasury number three. This stuff has been collected in what format? Curtis? Big collections. No, full <laughs> Marvel Masterworks. Marvel Masterworks. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. Uh, but also ep Epic Collection and Essentials. I think they made it this far. I used to have a bunch of these Essentials. But now, uh, is this, uh, remind me, is this the stuff that comes right after the that Jack Kirby leaves? Yes. So you're looking at the Buscema era when Jerry Conway comes into the uh, the book, uh, Len Wein. And I think Sal Buscema might do some stuff here. Let me see. Yep. Uh, yeah, so by John, Sal, and Rich Buckler. Correct. Yeah. Now, Volume 2 is out of print. Volume 3, you can still find. I think Cheap Graphic Novels had some the last time I saw. Um, but I don't think Volume 2. Volume 2 has been out of print for a little bit. I haven't heard anything about a reprint of that, by the way. Daredevil, Omnibus, Volume 2. This one took me by surprise when I got to announce it because yeah. I know that volume one wasn't the most popular seller and people kept asking me if there's going to be a volume two. And I honestly was like, I don't know. I don't think so because the first one just didn't sell well. Well, they didn't reprint the first one and then went ahead and gave us a volume two. I don't <laughs> know if the if they will reprint the first one with the new Marvel spine and everything, but here it is. I wonder why the first one didn't sell well. Is there a particular type of Daredevil fan only starts carrying when Frank Miller kicks in. I, I think there's lots of those. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. I, I would I would have expected it to sell, you know, pretty, fairly decent, but yeah. but nice it, doing this it, it is. But at the time, you know, it was a Silver Age book, and yeah. it, uh, yeah. so. But it is coming out with a volume two, and that makes me really happy that people yeah. are now going to get this volume two. Yes. And this collects Daredevil 42 to 74, the crossover with Iron Man 35, and then material from Iron Man 36. So again, Curtis, this stuff has been released where before? Collections. 
Yeah, this is um, this is the, the material before, kind of right, almost right before Black Widow joins the title. So I think yeah, Volume I mean, Three will yes. probably be the entire Volume Three would be the entire Daredevil Black Widow uh, uh, team up. And ah, yeah. oh, nice! One of my personal nice. favorites. Yes, yes. no. Kidding. Let me yes. tell you something. Choosing one out of this bunch is going to be hard for me because oh my gosh, there's so many good ones solicited. Coming out in June, Captain Marvel, Janice Vell, my Captain Marvel, my favorite Captain Marvel of all time, written by Peter David and Fabian Yusiasa. So collecting Captain Marvel zero through thirty-five and Captain Marvel one through twenty-five after the series was relaunched. I don't know how many people are familiar with this character. But if you don't know, I hope I do a good enough job when I get the book to do a proper overview of this because I love this yeah. series. Yeah. This is a series that I got. Yeah, Peter David was notorious for not having a lot of luck with his series that kept getting canned. I want to say this one got canceled three times. And this is during the time when you were at uh, Wizard, right? Yeah. Uh, Lars? Yes. So, so, so Some of it, yes. Um, well, Peter always said that, you know, part of the reason that series kept getting canceled on him was because he would stick around long enough for it to get canceled on him. Uh, there'd be other writers that if the series wasn't doing great, they would just jump ship and, but Peter would hang around. Um, I, I think this series is great. I mean, I, like I say, this, this is one of the very few I own in singles. I barely own any singles these days, but uh, I will gladly upgrade to this one. Yeah, so, I remember when this came out, and it was so different um, than anything that was on the comic rack. It was, it was just a, it was really, really fun and exciting. And the art by Chris Cross, I'd never heard of that guy before, and it's different, um, mm -hmm. and a little bit, I don't know. It, some people didn't like it at the time, I remember, but I thought it was just great. And I don't know what he's up to these days. I, this is kind of the only thing I know him for. He did, he did some issues of JSA. He did some issues of JLA, Flash. Uh, but this is the one that I remember him from. Yeah, and basically because I grew up in the 90s, so I crisscross, right? Yeah. yeah. Holy moly, man. This book is huge. 1,400 pages, $150. Yeah. So yeah. issue number zero, that was a wizard special, right, yes. Lars? Yes, it was, yes. Mm -hmm. so thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, but thank you to Peter David. Moment. So what this doesn't collect is the legacy issues. The legacy when he was – called Legacy. Those issues were written by Femi Nisiasa. He first appeared in, it was the Captain Marvel, the, or I'm sorry, the Silver Surfer issues, the annual, and then he had his own little mini-series mm -hmm. where Adam X, the Extreme, came out, and yeah. So, that stuff is not in here. Maybe one day we'll get that stuff collected in a trade paperback or something, but... yeah. But I think this it's freaking cool. But I think it's nice that you know it, it's this is Genesville by Peter David, so you wouldn't have those issues in there. Yeah. Um, Peter does a great job of like with characters he doesn't necessarily create because like you know in X Factor he does a great job with Layla or Lila Miller, and um, he didn't create her. Yeah. No, that was all Bendis, and Bendis, Bendis said Bendis. that was going to be the next hot character, and sure enough, she kind of was, but not because of him, but it was because of uh, Peter David's yeah. writing on X Factor. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is a big book, but the price is $150. I'm sorry, I didn't go over these that I or this one here. This one's $100, wow. 800 pages. Wow, um, half the size. Captain Marvel, 1400 pages, $150. Yeah. Spider Man by Joe Kelly mm -hmm. Omnibus. Um, I love, love that Ken Lashley cover. Big fan of his artwork. Now, like, that's Phil Jimenez doing the variant with Venom. But this collects just. Everything that Joe Kelly wrote during the brain trust years of Brand New Day and going into, yeah, going into big time. And it also contains the miniseries, Nonstop Spider-Man, Savage Spider-Man, and then Marvel Fanfare, Web Spinners, mm -hmm. Tells of Spidey, 7 through 9, and then material from Spider-Man Extra 1 and 3, Amazing Spider, 577, 600, 612, 634, to 637, and 647. And then the Grim Hunt Craven mm. Saga. This one's 880 pages, $100. It is definitely one of those creator centric books. Yeah. Um, and for okay. people that are going to ask, like, is this going to double dip with anything? Absolutely. It will double dip with the big time volume two if we get, I'm sorry, brand new day, uh, volume two, it, whenever we get that announcement. Mm. 
But this collect stuff that hasn't, I don't see it ever being collected anywhere else. So if you're a Joe Kelly fan, Spider-Man fan, you're already getting this. This kind of reminds me of, I almost said John Byrne Spider-Man, but that was mapped. No, never mind. This actually has conclusions to a lot of these stories. Whereas that one continued into the Howard mm. Mackey stuff. Right. Senator Joe Kelly, thank you for mentioning that. I like that. Thor, Love and Thunder, the art mm. of the movie. These are those landscape books. And then the art oh, of yeah. Yeah. Hawkeye. And the biggie. Oh, here's the big prize. Here's Uncanny X Men Volume 5. And the contents. We can hear your squeals of joy. Over On Kenny X-Men, 194 to 109. Annuals 9 and 10. New Mutant uh -huh. Special Edition number 1. New Mutants Annual number 2. Nightcrawler 1 through 4. Longshot 1 through 6. And then material from Marvel Fanfare 33. Yep. Uh, so in case you missed it, I did make an announcement that they updated some of the um, books. And this is the one that they updated. They added New Mutants Annual number 2, which is the first appearance of Psylocke in America. And where she joins the team. And they also included mm -hmm. X-Men annual number 10. Which is yeah, where Longshot long shot drops yeah, in. Yeah. And beautiful artwork by Arthur Adams. And New yeah. Mutants annual 2 has uh, Alan Davis on art. But I think Marvel made the right call with that one. I think the ones they <laughs> added. I think the ones they added plug some gaps. And the stuff. I don't even wish to reopen the debate. But the stuff that some of the other people wanted to add. I'm like why would you do that? I think this is a very good mix. So $125, 1,064 pages. Yeah. Very happy to have those in there. I mean, I know some people wanted X Factor, of course, in there. Um, but adding eight issues of X Factor plus the annual, yeah, plus the setup, I don't think they were ever going to do that. No, and the X Factor issues will surely appear in the inevitable classic X Factor omnibus. There you are, Rebel by Design. Every time I see Dazzler, I think of you. But this time, you're happy about Betsy. Um, oh. But oh, sorry, I just I just recently reread a lot of this uh, in the Masterworks, and yeah, you do need those two annuals because Psylocke comes in and Longshot comes in. If you don't have them, then it would create some weird holes. Um, yes, yeah. and and I realized some people were like, "Well, that's already available in New Mutants and uh, Omnis," and, and yes, but not everybody gets those. Right. Are, believe it or not, there are people that just get X Men and yeah. That's it. So it was it was an odd thing at the time because I think that I somehow missed those annuals for a bit, and suddenly there were these new characters in the regular series, and that threw me. No, off. no, <laughs> but Betsy makes sense. But Longshot just kind of shows up out of nowhere and uncanny. Right. Like after the mutant massacre, he's just there. Just here he is. Yeah, yeah. X Force by Benjamin Percy, Volume Two, collecting issues fifteen through twenty six, and Wolverine number thirteen. So this one is $44.99 mm -hmm. and has 360 pages. I believe this is the one where Wolverine writes an adamantium surfboard. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that this X-Force series, though, is one of the best ones of the uh, of the current X-Men titles. Is that right? I haven't been reading X-Men for it's, a long time. It's been a bit uneven, but I've enjoyed it. And I particularly, there was a story in there about how often Quint, Quinton Choir, if I'm saying his name properly, um, gets killed. And resurrected in the course of you know carrying out X Force's uh, agenda, and I thought that was quite a good story. So uh, the highs in here, I think, are pretty high. Um, ups and downs for me. Uh, volume yeah. one, I enjoyed more though. Yeah. What was the date of Uncanny Five? Good question, Just Mason. How have you been, brother? I've always been a big fan of his uh, Avatar. There, Final Fantasy. June. The Warrior, I think is what it is. It is June 2023. June. So far away. It is, isn't it? Will we make it that long? We're almost there. You'll, you'll, you'll say that, and then we're almost there. X23, Volume 1. Yeah. I love when these things say Volume 1. gives me hopes for Volume yes. 2. Yes. Uh, but this collects X23, 1 through 6, Target X1 uh, through 6. The... Let me see the 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 ongoing series one through twenty one Captain Universe X twenty three Dick Ken Dark Wolverine eight through nine and the material from X Men Serve and Protect Wolverine Road to Hell and all new Wolverine Saga. So here we go. One hundred and twenty five dollars nine hundred and twenty eight pages. 
So I know some people, and I, I did ask about NYX, and they said no, which mm -hmm. makes sense. He, she was a different type of character. Mm -hmm. But they did say they make, <clears throat> they might make a collection of NYX again, releasing not just the original series, but also the follow-up series, which was okay. Um, what's interesting, though, is that they also didn't collect her appearances in Uncanny X-Men, which, again, mm -hmm. she was a completely different character. Right. So yeah, Is the Claremont um, stuff you're talking about. Yeah, the, when she appeared in the Savage Land, she had the Fang costume on for no reason. Right. It's Chris Claremont. He gets a pass. Okay. And then of course the announcements of the remaster works. These are the reprints of the classic Marvel mm -hmm. masterworks. They're relaunching it in May with Volume One, Amazing Spider-Man. Volume Two will be X-Men, and then. Volume 3 will be Avengers. And when I say Volume 1 and 2 and 3, if you get the limited editions of these, if you get the, if you collect them in that way, they actually show this is a Volume 1 of a limited 660 prints or however many they're going to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, and each one of them will have that volume. So if you get the limited editions only, you if you collect them all. Coop, what? I've never heard this. <laughs> <laughs> you masterwork sneak you have offended the elder crowd just because it's not for you that is not <laughs> bad uh so volume one of fantastic four reprinting issues one through ten 288 pages 75 dollars one of the big dude it was funny because um a little behind the scenes people were trying to get things in there like the letter pages because the letter pages are in oh, yeah. the omnibus editions yeah and what this has though is the most up to date the 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 biggest just recoloring of everything in here like the process is being overdone and they're doing it with completely all new book yeah yep. and it's there there are there's going to be more material in there. I don't know about the letter pages. I think for that, they're just saying, you know, it's different than the Omnis, and that's what makes the Omnis stand out. Shut up, Woke Nato. <laughs> Masterworks in the path to later Omnis. Respect your elders. That's right. And I know there's people that love Masterworks. And I'm glad that they're reprinting these. And, and I also love the letter pages. I'm a fan of letter pages, which is yeah. why I love the Omnis so much. Yeah. Uh, Curtis said one day we should release a letter page omnibus. That's a brilliant did idea. I say that? That's a brilliant idea. Yes, you did. And just we, the letters. Said, that is so stupid. It, it must it have would, been it a would, joke. It would, it would maybe sell 300 copies, but it would be a great, yeah, but that's lovely. I think you should, <laughs> we should highlight all of the creators, like the famous people who have written in over the years. Like Kurt Busiek and George R. R. Martin. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Good. 288 you know none of my pages were ever none of my letters that i hand wrote as a kid were ever printed i saw one recently somebody shared about uh uh what's his name the guy that does uh wonder woman dead earth and beta ray bill and murder falcon um why is his name uh warren johnson dan warren johnson he wrote a letter at, at 13 years old to marvel saying that he wishes uh one day to draw for marvel comics was so cute. And I'm like, look at you now, man. So th the Marvel Masterworks is just another way of collecting these. So now yeah. you're giving these like people three different options, right? Like you're given the Epic route, mm -hmm. which is the cheapest, most affordable option. The Marvel Masterworks route, which is the most expensive, but also yes. the cream of the crop. Prestige. Like, yeah. yeah, the most prestige yeah. format. And then you're given the... Best option, which is the omnibus option. I said what I said, Curtis. You heard me. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's oversized. Oh, no, I won't. I won't disagree. <laughs> it's over, and we have letter pages. We've. Uh, now, we, I'm gonna get a shirt that says, "And we have letter pages, omnibus baby." <laughs> we um we talked about this before. I'm somewhere in the middle on this because, like, I started buying the X Men Masterworks when there. I don't think there really were any omnis at the time. I think that no. was the best option, and I just kind of never stopped. And so I don't actually own X Men one two three four Omni or Uncanny X Men Omnis because I've got the Masterworks, but still buying them. They're still good. I mean, they're really good. 
So Epix is for the poor. No, that's the essentials. <laughs> there's a no. there's a hierarchy. Yeah. Look, the yeah. Omni guys make fun of the Masterworks guys. The Masterworks guys make fun of the Epic guys, and the Epic guys make fun of the, I guess the essential Omni guys. guys. <laughs> the essential guys. <laughs> Yes. And then the essential guys go and make fun of the single issue guys. And it's those the, guys make fun of the digital people. And it's then the Judean people people's make fun front. of the Pokemon people. Yeah, it's the, it's the Judean people's front problem all over again. Ah, yeah. uh, nice. <laughs> uh, so they are reprinting those, and we're getting a new one. Look at that beautiful cover. Oh, my see, God. See? My <laughs> era of Avengers with Avengers Volume 23. Yeah. Uh, this collects Avengers 326 to, I'm sorry, 236, my gosh, 336, 236 to 245, annual number 13, and Hawkeye miniseries one through four. So in here you have Roger Stern, Mark Grunewald, Anna Sinti, and Al Milgram and Mark Grunewald. Why is Mark? Oh, that's right. Uh, Steve Ditko? What did Steve Ditko do here? He, he didn't do the Hawkeye series, did he? But that no, was more no, no, he no, he didn't do that one. He must no. have done a fill in. He did. He was doing a lot of fill ins at this time. He did. Okay. He did. Like, have you seen a collection of like his DC stuff? Like, he did some Legion of Superheroes issues, and they're like all over the place because there's just one here, one here, one here. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I wasn't being a what the kids called a gatekeeper. I was just joking. Oh, here oh, it says um an annual adventure, uh, with the creative dream team of Stern, Ditko, and Burn. So he does oh, annual Burn. thirteen. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Digital comics are not real comics. <laughs> and Clumsy said it was something in the annual. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Bendis is the best Avengers, Omar. Remember that. What? What is, what is, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Why would you say that? What's up, Aaron? Big shout out to my buddy Aaron for always helping me out with these um, upcoming collected editions. Couldn't do it without you, man. Cheapest, most affordable is the digital. Yeah, that is, is true. Especially if you wait for the Christmas sales. Yeah. Uh, the Humble Bundle sales are huge, man, for independent oh, comics. Yeah. yeah, they did the IDW Transformers, and my daughter got those. And I'm like, but I own them! And she's <laughs> like, yeah, but now I can read them on my iPad. I'm like, you're not my kid. Marvel Masterworks, Howard the Duck, Volume Howard 2. Howard the Duck. Uh, collecting issues 15 through 31, annual number one. This has been available in Complete Collection and Omnibus Edition, but now it's coming out in Masterworks format. 376 pages, $75. Uh, so Steve Gerber's masterpiece, mm. Judgment Day. <laughs> okay. So this in, is the in companion cover. Yeah. This is the companion. So this collects oh. Axe, Eve of Judgment, Omega, Death to the Mutants. What can't we? People just stop fighting. Star Fox. <laughs> Star Fox <laughs> is in his own what? Uh, one shot. Why can't we? Fantastic 447 through 48. Wow. You know, I, I'm i waiting to read this in trade paperback. My Some of my viewers have emailed me or, or uh, messaged me on social media asking if I've been reading it. I'm like, no, I'm waiting. Please don't spoil it for me. Uh, I, I, I have been reading it, and I have been surprisingly enjoying it. I mean, when you bring two mm. factions of heroes into collision with each other, it has to be done a certain way, and it's not always been done well. But here I thought, this this is this is good stuff. Yeah, I, I I would prefer to buy it in hardcover, but I presume that'll come down the road. So I assume a hardcover might come since I've been collecting a lot of those. But here is uh, this is the actual Judgment Day trade right here. So this collects issues one through six of that event. By the way, if you're not familiar with what Axe is, it's Avengers, X Men, Eternal. So it's this big fight. That's Mark Brooks on cover right there. Um. I've already been freaking spoiled something because there was a... I'm not even going to talk about the character. The character was trending on social media. The internet was a mistake, says the guy that's hosting <laughs> a... Inventing the internet was a mistake? <laughs> the internet was a mistake. Uh, oh, Avengers God. Axe, X-Men Axe, right. and Eternals. Uh, material from Free Comic Book Day 2022, Avengers X-Men. We're running out of combinations of big super teams that can fight each other. Well, in a way they are. I mean, or, or 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 ones that people would care about, you know. It's a seven-year rule, I mean, right? Every seven years, you recycle the same story over oh, and over again. Yeah. That's like, what keeps going. Avengers versus Great Lakes Avengers. You know, that might not sell all that great. No, but it'll be Avengers versus Great Lakes Avengers versus X-Men. Right. Yes. Versus um, Fallen Angels. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Iron Man Volume 4 Source Control. I have been enjoying this run. This is Christopher Cantwell, uh, for the people that have not read this. I heard his run is coming to an end, though. And this collects issues 20 through 25. Oh. So I think this concludes the run. The only thing that I haven't enjoyed about this is that it, it's been one continuing story with a returning villain. And it's not like he never really got his chance to shine just writing Iron Man without it being one big story. Uh, but it was, but it's been good. I really liked it. Avengers Forever. I think that's an Aaron Cooter cover. I like that. So this is Volume 2, Collecting Avengers Forever 6 through 11, Avengers Forever Infinity Comic 1 through 4. Jason Aaron, Jim Tao, Aaron Cooter, and Kev Walker. Wait a minute. Jerry, is uh, Jerry Duggan taking over Iron Man? I figured they're going to wait for some announcements for New York Comic Con to see who the new creative teams are. Yeah. Like, who's – there's somebody that I saw – who's taking – I'm sure somebody in the chat will know. Who's taking over Fantastic Four? Isn't it Ryan North? That's it. Thank you so much. Yep, yeah, Ryan North. Crushed it. Yes. Wow, look at you. Yeah. Which should be – he's always good. That man, Dude, Jeff Walker's a great artist. Talented. Thank you. Yes, he is. I had no idea he was from 2000 AD. Apparently, that's where we pulled him from. Okay. I loved him in Thunderbolts. I loved him in Avengers uh, – what was it? He did a Arena, Avengers Arena. I'm a big fan of his art. I love it. So it is Ryan North. Thank you all for confirming that. Duggan is writing, starting Invincible Iron Man. Uh, this is Defenders Beyond, Al Ewing. Okay. Oh, this is the team that showed up in the Defender, the last Defender story. Okay. Right. I was wondering why they look familiar. Dude, and Javier Rodriguez, also another one of my yes. new, oh, yeah. I guess, modern artists is what you would call him. Mm -hmm. Guy has a classic feel to his art. I know this isn't the greatest of his covers, but oh my gosh, yeah. everybody should read the history of the Marvel mm. Universe. It is freaking phenomenal, and his art is just it, killer that was, on that. That was good. That was definitely good, yeah. But this collects Defenders Beyond 1 through 5. Mm. The new Amazing Spider-Man series by Zeb Wells. I read the first trade paperback, and I, uh, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Uh, ups and downs, that's for sure. John Romita Jr. is back, but so is Patrick Gleason drawing this, collecting issues 9 through 14. This is all heading to a big crossover, I think, right? Because they've been hinting at that since that one, um, that free comic book day story. It says, prepare to have your heart broken all over again. Good, <laughs> good. And have your box of Kleenex ready, people. I was just thinking I've not had enough heartbreak in my life, so this could inject it, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, Trials of X, Volume 5, continuing the Trials of X era, which I guess they're doing before the Destiny of X era. And this collects X-Men. Well, that hurts to read. Onslaught Revelation. <laughs> uh, well, well, that... That oh, was because of Way of X. That was the weird, like, one shot they decided to do instead of, like, final issues of Way of... It really should have just been Way of X. And for some bewildering reason, they decided to do an onslaught one shot. But well, I guess they they have been renaming and renumbering these things, right? Like Excalibur became Knights of X. Yes, it was just, but it was weird because like that was almost the culmination of the story, mm. you know, that that had been running. But you know, it's fine. well, this is a another anthology series that takes place. It goes Dawn of X, Reign of X, and now it's Trials of X. Yeah. So we have volumes five and volume six. Yeah. Look at Emma. Uh, this one here collecting X Corp 5, Marauders 24 through 25, X Force 23 to 24, and Excalibur 24. And both of these are $19.99. Yeah. X Men by oh, Jerry yeah. Duggan, Volume 3. Okay. I, this series has been. I've liked it. Um, yeah. I, I had a lot of fun with this series. It's not necessarily and, my favorite, but it is good. No, but I mean, once you follow up Hickman. I think it's well. There's you know, that it's kind of hard to to follow up Hickman. I, it doesn't matter if it's Avengers or Fantastic Four or this. I think it's just hard to follow him up. But I think Duggan is having fun with it. And I mean, whenever the first issue has a giant robot made of X Men, I know what kind of ride I'm in for. Yeah. But this is Volume Three, collecting issues 13 through 18, 168 pages 
fifteen dollars and ninety nine cents. You bet I bought that Emma cover and single issue. Yeah, see, that's the thing yeah. that's keeping me from yeah. buying single issues, like because I would buy a bunch, and it would be a lot of just Emma Frost covers. Uh, <laughs> Did your wife know about this? Because of the character, yes, she. I have a. Hold, on. let me see if you can see this. I, I might plug it. Hold on, oh, wait for it. Wait for it. Let's see. If it... Can you all see the bottom of that? I have a poster of Psylocke. Ah, <laughs> yes. Okay. The classic. It's a classic. I I know you admire Emma for her great business skill. Yes. Anyway, uh, Deadpool by Kelly Thompson. The complete collection is coming out. Or I'm sorry, it's just called Deadpool by Ke uh, Kelly Thompson. So not complete collection, but I guess it's an all-in-one collecting all of King or all of Deadpool one through ten. It was called King Deadpool though. I wonder why it's not collecting it's King, De or King Deadpool on the cover there too. Yeah. So maybe that's just a misprint. Twenty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents and two hundred and fifty-six pages. It is so weird, and I bet this changes. That we don't have a Deadpool ongoing series. Like, how how do we not have that? Especially with the big announcement of Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, and Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool. Yeah, I've, I've not been keeping track. They still must make Deadpool comics. They just don't have an ongoing. Oh, yeah. They're I mean, all the time. There, there, aren't months, there, aren't, there aren't months with no Deadpool, I presume. I'm, I'm, I want to say it's been a while. Could be. Okay. And I mean, he's appeared in some of the Reign of X stuff, but I don't think he's. He, it's been a while since I've seen an ongoing by him. Well, sometimes taking a break is okay. Him. Yeah, I'm sure that that okay. one's not called King Deadpool because they wanted bookstores. They want bookstores to be able to file it in the D section. But good Could point. Be. Good point. Yeah. Uh, Marvel snapshots. This has been available in oversized hardcover before, but now it's coming out in trade paperback. And this is uh, Kurt Busiek and a bunch of other creators. But I think him and Alex Ross were the people behind this. Um, oh, okay. We have an upcoming Deadpool series by Alyssa Wong. Deadpool's supposed to get pregnant. I don't know if that's series Seems or not. on track for Deadpool. <laughs> I don't know if that's series or not. And I don't know how, how he would handle <laughs> X-Men... Red. Oh, okay. So uh Aaron is saying that it's written by Alyssa Wong and drawn by Martin Cocolo this year. Yeah. X -Men X -Men Red. Red. I've been this, enjoying this. Yep. This is excellent. I've read the first trade yeah. and I really dug it. Yeah, it's really good. Uh and it keeps being good. And I have to say, like the post Hickman series on the whole have been really, really good. Um, justified keeping the experiment going. I've not liked how they treated Moira McTaggart after him, but everything else has been great. I don't want to spoil anything, and maybe we should have a conversation. We should talk about recent X Men books with spoilers. If anybody wants oh, to join me and Lars, for that, that would be fun yeah. because yeah. I, I have strong feelings about oh, that. Okay, and, all right. And yes, I don't want to spoil what happened. Well, let's well, let's, let's do a, let's do maybe do a separate video and, yeah, and, we'll, and, uh, and declared spoilers will be in there. Yeah, um, we'll um, we'll talk about that after the show. Yeah. So you yeah. collecting issues six through ten. And Curtis, you're more than welcome to join ten years from now when you catch up in your epic yeah. uh, format. Okay, sure. Sounds Curtis, good. did we announce this? I don't think I announced this, right? We did announce this. Yes, okay. we did. I'm an idiot. Then carry on. Oh, that's okay. But this is the first time seeing the cover. That's pretty cool. Yes, you get the cover and the back cover and the spine. And right? The back cover. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, because they've the they have lost the uh, Conan. Right, so to fill that void, they're sticking in here um, aliens, uh, collecting Dark Horse material. The first aliens. Well, you don't sell it like that. This book is good. Oh yeah, well I mean I haven't read any of this, but I I oh. I, I, I hear that people love this this original alien stuff. Um, the two there's three miniseries plus material from Dark Horse presents, so it should be uh, pretty good. Four hundred forty eight pages, forty five bucks. It's got a mature rating on it, everybody. And how fortunate that Disney owns it, so it won't be taken away from them. Yeah. Well, I mean, Fox actually. Yeah, it won't be right? taken away. From... Well, the it was thing about on, these, it was owned by Fox, and then Disney bought Fox. Correct. So the thing about these these the... um these movie titles is that the properties are still, I mean, yes, the studio owns them, but people still have, like. In um, shares in this that have to be paid out for royalties and that kind of thing. Yes, no, that doesn't mean it's free. No, no, it, it's yeah. still the 
sell well enough to justify the payments. But but the point is, like, they're not going to lose the license suddenly. Right. Yeah. Uh, so this collects the Dark Horse era. Aliens 1 through 6, Aliens 1 through 4, uh, Earth War 1 through 4, and Material from Dark Horse Presents. Now, what I will say about this era is that this was great. If you're a fan of Aliens and you hate Alien 3, like most people in the right state of mind, oh. um, <laughs> you're going to love this because this is a continuation of those stories. As a matter of fact, what they did, the, the original printing of these had the characters of Ripley and Newt and Hicks. However, when the reprints came about, they lost the rights to those names. So Dark Horse, every, I think every, the only one that had, was the first two printings, I want to say, had the original names. And then after that, years ago, the names were changed. Marvel acquired everything back. So everything's back to the original names. So that is Ripley and That's that great. is Newt. Yeah. So even Fantastic. here, you'll see the names Hicks and Newt. Um, I did an overview of the first one. I just got volume three of the omnibus. I really enjoyed the series. Like volume two, I hardly read any of those growing up. And volume three. I, I don't think I think there might be one or two series in there that I read. So I'm excited that this might eventually lead into the Aliens versus Predator. I actually liked Alien 3, but oh, I, yeah, oh, I, know. Baby. I know. Here we go. X-Men and wait, 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 wait. What did you say, Curtis? I mean, Lars, who said that? I said no. This is a positive channel. We don't talk about Aliens 3. All right, welcome you back. You're being positive about it. <laughs> you opened the bid. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I didn't kick the wrong person out. Uh, X-Men Epic Collection uh -huh. Legacies, Legacy. Volume 22. Man, we're continuing X-Men yeah. and Epic Collections, brother. Um, I've stated this before, and I'll state it again. I love the way they map these out in Epic Collection. Uh, this collects Uncanny X-Men 297 to 300, Annual Number 17, which is the first appearance of the Executioner. Is it Jason Pearson, I think, is the artist on that. Um, 297 to 300, that's Brandon Peterson and then the return of John Romita Jr. X-Men 17 to 23, that's all Andy Cooper. Strive Strike File! So that's after the events of Executioner Song. Strive, just get ready. I think Fabian Yusesa was trying to win some kind of award because, oh my gosh, the way some of that stuff was written, it was so hard well, to understand. You know, <laughs> Kurt, Kurt, Kurt was Curtis and I did an epic uh, podcast on Executioner Song. And oh, we that's had, right. Yeah, we had we had great fun reciting mm -hmm. dialogue for well, to, yes, uh, we uh, did text text from Strife Strike File. Yeah, okay. We did you some guys, dramatic readings. It was pretty good. Dramatic reading. <laughs> you leave Fabian Nicias alone. He was getting paid by the like what kind of dollar words he was using. <laughs> Dude, that man had a thesaurus handy when he was writing. That's all I'm gonna no, say. He had no, to look I, up so many of those words. No, I like Fabian's writing, but that he was getting paid is not the best justification. Well, right. Uh, and then X-Men Unlimited number one, which is the Sienna Blaze story. $44.99, 488 pages. Um, yeah. I, I'm glad that they're continuing that in yeah. epic format. Yeah, sir. Fantastic Four! The Dream is Dead. Ooh. This is yeah. an interesting era of Fantastic Four because this is okay. This is so the very have... end of Steve Englehart's run. Yeah, it so ends three... with his last issue. So it has three twenty one to three thirty three annual twenty two, Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom Triumph and Torment, which I find really interesting to be collecting in here. And I know it's a Fantastic Four villain, but wow. Well, I mean, it's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't feature the Fantastic Four, but it is a pretty important uh, story for Doctor Doom, just in terms of... Oh, it, it's my favorite Doctor Strange yeah. and Doctor Doom story. It's freaking awesome, man. It, it, I love it's it. Fun. It's funny how often that one gets revisited. So, yeah. so this is the, the era that is infamous because editorial meddling meant that Steve Englehart was so unhappy that he took his name off the book and used the name John... John Harkness. Uh, he's credited as John Harkness for most of this. And even uh, the, the very last issue, if you go to Steve Englehart's website, he does little blurbs about all the issues that he does and like how uh, the behind the scenes or whatever, but he doesn't talk about 333 at all. He completely oh. hates that issue. And the reason is because he put himself and his family on the last page. And so the Fantastic Four... 
Uh, because it's his last issue, he's going to say goodbye. So he does caricatures of his family talking to the Fantastic Four. And he says that after he handed in, after everything was signed off and the artwork was handed in, um, editorial went and put a toupee on his head. And he says it looks terrible. And he was in completely um, insulted and embarrassed by it. And he just disavows that whole were issue they, now. Were they just punking him? I mean, why would they do that? He, he, I don't know. He doesn't know why. Uh, he doesn't know why. He never asked. He just, and then he left Marvel. So he never just specifically said why, huh? No, uh, he, yeah, we spoke about it when I did an interview with him on my podcast and he does, he didn't know. What podcast is that, Curtis? <laughs> the epic Marvel podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Namor, the Submariner, volume wow. three, Marvel trolling all the people that wanted a volume two. Uh, <laughs> collecting Submariner 4 through 27. Man, that's a big book. 512 pages, $44.99. Yep. I think that uh, this is just to keep people, so just to remind people that, you know, we don't have to do things in order. I don't think that you yeah. should expect anything. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and then we have some reprints here. We have uh, Daredevil, The Man Without Fear, which was voted in our top 20. Who's this guy back here? That's Purple Man. Is that Purple Man? Mm -hmm. uh, Lee. So they'll reprint this, but they won't reprint the Omni. No. What, what clue might you have that it's the Purple Man, I wonder? Yeah. Um. Uh, I do. It is an interesting cover to choose, but uh, I forgot how much Wally Wood was in here. Like, that, that is one of the biggest highlights of that book. Amazing Spider-Man Epic Collection, The Goblin Lives. Another one that came and went. And yep. collecting issues 53 to 67. Spectacular Spider-Man, not the ongoing series, but the two black and white stories, one and two. Marvel Super Heroes 14 and the material from Knob Brand. Ech. You know, just the first it's issue was black and white. Of uh, Spectacular? Yeah, the second one I think was in color. I could be wrong. Yeah, you're probably right. I It's been a while since I looked at that material because that, that's been collected in the omnibus format. And Star Wars, Old Republic, Volume 5. Loving that cover. I thought that was the Goblin back there i was just gonna say david that bowie. <laughs> labyrinth and david bowie but i thought that was too yeah. obvious of a joke to make yep yeah. keep them coming man i'm over 40 years old obvious jokes is all i have uh star wars night errands one through five and the the i've never read any of this stuff but john jackson miller has me interested because he did the old republic omnibus uh where do i have that and that was one of my favorite reads in 2020 loved it I think this material is some of the more recent stuff in terms of the Dark Horse material that they did. Like the last tail end of their stuff? Yeah, I think so. So this one's forty nine ninety nine and 512 pages. But it has the Jedi versus Sith and Star Wars Tale 16. Yeah. Marvel verse Riri Williams, Ironheart. Uh, Eve Ewing. Oh, dude... And Brian Michael Bendis. I wasn't a fan of Ben. I know this is not surprising to anybody probably that's watched me for a while. I wasn't a fan of Bendis' uh, Ironheart uh, and her creation. It just... But Eve Ewing's run on Ironheart, which was only sadly eight issues because I don't think very many people knew about it or cared enough. Yeah. That stuff was awesome. And if you're a fan of New Warriors, that stuff is awesome. Like she did such a good job. That one is nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and introduces yeah. you to the character of Riri. I'm greasing the wheels. For oh, the hold on. Go. There's a question Where? Uh, in the comments. There, what's Marvel Verse? Um, Marvel Verse is like handpicked stories from these characters, whether they've been around for 60, 50, 80, 10 years that usually the editors pick out that best represent the characters to kind of catch you up to speed as to who they are. The interesting thing about Marvel verse is sometimes they're in Canon. And then sometimes some of the stories aren't in Canon, but the spirit of the character is still there. Like I've seen some stuff from like Marvel adventures being collected in some of those uh, Marvel verse books. So they're smaller scale books, kind of like, uh, like this compared like this compared to a trade paperback. Smaller yeah. scale books, and they're $9.99. Yeah. About 100 and something pages. 
They're marketed toward uh, the younger all ages crowd and especially uh, libraries and uh, and schools and that kind of stuff. They're, that's where you'll find these books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure if, if you like the Disney Plus show, you'll enjoy this. Yeah. What? what yeah, is yeah. Marvel? That's the other thing. Marvelverse is all tied. <laughs> to, right. all tie in. <laughs> Mar Marvelous is all tied into the TV and film. Yeah, they're all movie and TV tie-ins. That makes sense. Yeah, usually they do. Like um, any time, it was like a Venom movie, so they did a Venom uh, Marvel verse. Yeah, my wife's library at school, like her school library, is full of these, and I love it. I yeah. love. Uh, mm -hmm. And kids do check them out. It's really cool to see kids like in mm -hmm. middle school check them out. Mm -hmm. And Mighty Marvel Masterworks Daredevil Volume Two, issues twelve through twenty-one. We don't have an Iron Man yet. <laughs> we have a Daredevil Volume Two. That's crazy we have a captain marvel coming out we don't have an iron man yet um so let's play uh rewind a little bit here for the people that missed out on this ouch shots fired oh my gosh that hurts i can't even read that <laughs> wow i can't even read that one Woo. uh <laughs> ouch uh. That can't be true. Okay, to each their own, David Munoz. I still respect your opinion. It just hurt just, me. Just, I mean, that. not just not very much, but <laughs> as much as I respect Lars for liking Alien Three. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I loved it. I didn't say the I loved Mighty Thor Omnibus Volume Four. It's coming out. One hundred dollars, seven hundred eighty-four pages. Uh, we have Daredevil coming out in May of 2023. This is Volume 2, 42 through 74, Iron Man 35, and Iron Man 36, $100 and 800 uh, pages. And I love you right back, David. Everybody's entitled <laughs> to their opinion. However wrong just, it is. Yeah. Just like my kids are. I try to teach them that. Not everybody's going to agree with you, and that's okay. That's part of life. Uh, the biggie here, Captain Marvel, Janice Fell by Peter David. And this one's $150, 1,400 pages collecting zero through 35 of captain marvel and then one through 25 do you remember when they did the uh, i'll talk a little bit about that uh, let me let me wrap this up i want to ask you something Lars. Right. um spider-man by joe kelly omnibus this is just pretty much the stories that he wrote when he was part of the brain trust of brand new day as well as his non-stop spider-man and savage spider-man a couple of other issues here that he wrote and uh couple of marvel studio art books and oh yes uncanny x-men omnibus volume five newly restored material letter pages curtis uh 1064 pages 125 dollars x-force by benjamin piercy volume two at this moment i just want to remind everybody to smash that like button check out walt's comic shop that's right walt's comic shop they're based out of berlin germany and they have the cheapest prices for Marvel and DC big books. So they have flat rate shipping of 12 euro. And that is for all EU countries. All emails are answered within 24 hours. And that's wallscomingshop.com. Limited time. They have a code you can put at the checkout. Near main condition, all one word. And you get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order of 40 euros or more. That's Walls Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and collected premium editions in Europe. I can't sing it. My wife's the one that sings it. The Variants. We didn't talk about this one. Why did I skip this one? This is Gail Simone. I, I guess we did blow right by this one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and Phil Noto. This is, I guess, Variants is what they're calling multiverse versions of themselves, I guess, since uh, Loki. Yeah. Um, nothing personal, because Gail Simone is always good. You know. Absolutely thrilled to have her keep writing. Yeah, yeah I, I'm trying to think of a book that I didn't dig that she did. Maybe the third Birds of Prey run. That was pretty... Nice. I really enjoyed her Birds of Prey run, but yeah. Oh, no, the original Birds of Prey. Yeah. Top notch. Woo! Yeah. The... Um, it was the... I think it was right before they relaunched the New 52. That oh. era, when they relaunched it. and had Hawk and Dove. Yep. Yeah. Not so good. X-23 Omnibus Volume 1, $125, 928 pages. The Marvel Masterworks Fantastic Four, the remaster work. So new colors, beautiful, top-notch. We went over the hierarchy of who can make fun of who. 
a little bit earlier if you want to rewind to that. <laughs> Avengers 23, uh, Marvel Master. The result was epics are on top. No one agreed to that. No one agreed to that. <laughs> You you barely made the list. Marvel Masterworks, Howard the Duck Volume Two. There's a lot of Masterworks that month. That's that's three, right? Yeah. Then, oh yeah. So the reprints are not affecting the Marvel Masterworks releases. If you were worried about that, that's good. That's good. Wow. Judgment Day Companion yeah. and Judgment Day Axe, not the body spray. <laughs> Iron Man Volume Four, Source Control. And Avengers Forever Volume 2. I really like that cover. Oh. Cooter, Cooter's a great artist, man. And speaking of great artists, Javier Rodriguez on Defenders Beyond with Al Ewing. Amazing Spider-Man by Zeb Wells and John Romita Jr. Volume 3. Trials of X Volume 5 and 6. And X-Men by Jerry Duggan Volume 3. Deadpool, like is really um awesome. is A X E kind of the first time the X Men have been in the huge Marvel universe cross? Oh, and I guess they were in Empire as well. I just want to know how they're going to well, do um, A X E in those um, anthology trades if they will just skip yeah. it. They they did X Men Empire in the anthologies, so they those probably won't be skipped. The only ones they've skipped really are Fantastic Four. Juggernaut, and I haven't seen any solicitations for Sabretooth, and of course the big events like Inferno and X of Swords. X of Swords was not in there, and Inferno was not in there. Gosh dang it! Well, then this probably Sorry, won't. I gotta block this user. We have a bot. Marvel Snapshots? Does it have the tag Skynet? Mm. I don't know what the tag was. I don't know how it got in here, considering our topic. Uh, <laughs> X-Men Red Volume 2. And there's my buddy, Michael Emmond. You have one job, Michael. Aliens Epic Collection, The Original Years, Volume 1. And X-Men Epic Collection Legacies. Clang agrees with Curtis that Epic Collections are superior to single issues. That is correct. That's right. Uh, <laughs> four epic collection. Oh, this is all. I'm glad we agreed on context. that. <laughs> this is all a game of taking things out of context. Uh, Fantastic Four epic collection. The dream is dead. How many times has Professor X said that? <laughs> and Submariner Volume Three, and the reprints of Daredevil Volume One, Amazing Spidey Volume Four. Star Wars. Star Wars Labyrinth crossover. Legends, The Old Republic, Volume 5. I assume this will be the last one for people that are in the chat. Do you all know? Is this the last one? Uh, Ironheart. Oh, good question. Graphic. Uh, this is a graphic novel. And then the Mighty Marvel Masterworks. So let's go back to the beginning here and talk about what's the, what's the one book you guys are most excited for? Anybody in the chat? Leave the one book you're excited for from this solicitation. Curtis? Um, I'm going to say, actually, Aliens Epic Collection. Whoa, mind um, blown. Yeah, well, you know, I've just started a, um, I've just started a big read-through of the Dark Horse Star Wars material mm -hmm. uh, because I've got all these Epic Collections and I haven't really given them any proper time yet. So I'm reading one issue a day and I'm reading them in publication order rather than epic collection order. Um, so like starting with Dark Empire, going through the first Tales of the Jedi series and stuff. And that that output, when I was when I was growing up in the 90s, I didn't give Dark Horse the time of day. I was strictly kind of Marvel and that and a little bit of DC. That was it. And I didn't pay any attention to any other publishers. But now going back to that stuff. It's really good. That early Dark Horse Star Wars material is excellent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's making me really interested in the other stuff that Dark Horse was putting out in the in the 90s as well. And this Aliens uh, Epic Collection is right in that in that era right there. Yeah. You're interested in it now that they cannot make any money off it. Uh, yeah, Perfect yes. timing. Perfect. Whoops. Sorry, Dark Horse. <laughs> I... I'm a big fan of uh, the alien stuff, and I really like the Dark Horse era 
of Star Wars. I thought it was excellent. Um, what about you, Lars? What are you most excited for? Curtis, um, the uh, alien? <laughs> no, uh, the obvious one, the uh, Peter David Captain Marvel omnibus. Good choice. Um, That's my second one on the list. Yeah, which, you know, it, it was a fantastic run. Um, it, it, as I recall, it it was struggling with sales. And as good as it was. And that was part of the reason about like, you know, it got canceled and got relaunched and there was the whole Marvel competition style thing and everything else. I, yeah. It, it, remember it, that. It, it, oh, <laughs> how can you forget? Um, it, it, it felt like it was always flirting with cancellation, but it was, it was so good. And like, you know, um, they had three issues in there with Jim Starlin doing kind of the return of the, uh, original Captain Marvel, which if you're gonna bring that character back for a bit, you want Jim Starlin to do it. So yeah, it was it was this was really good. Hey, who's JJ Kirby? Is that related to Jack? He's in the I credits don't know. Too. Yeah, I see that. I don't know. I'm embarrassed to say I hey, don't know. Jack, I mean, Jack was gone by now. He passed away when 94, 90, yeah, 94, two, right? I think 92. Or I can't remember. 92, really? I thought it was 94, 95. Uh, uh, he, I, I know he, no, he, this, this is occasionally Kirby was known as JJ Kirby, I think. Mm. So um, he, uh, he died in 94 because I was overseas at the time. Mm. Uh, my choice, Uncanny X Men 5. Uh, of course, it's we not, the, it's not the big, it's not the big fatty that I dreamed about one day, but it's here. It's good to have Claremont nonstop. I mean, we have everything by Claremont now in his Uncanny Omnis, like in oversized hardcovers, from the beginning yeah. all the way until he left. Yeah. Uh, we got, we even have the Revolution. Uh, we're getting Extreme X Men. We don't have what was the X Men Forever, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, just, it's nice to have it on the shelf. Finally, there's some stray bits. There's X Men Forever. He didn't he write some issues of Nightcrawler? Um, mm -hmm. No, Derek he, Robertson, and yeah. I mean he did one shots and things like that, a mini series. So. Uh, but it's just nice to have it all. It, it's yeah. it, it's a good feeling to finally have it on my shelf, a volume five. There was a time, believe it or not, that you know, collected editions, like we didn't know. We thought a volume oh. one was all we we're gonna get of Uncanny X-Men, and that was it for yeah. years. And then out of nowhere, volume two came out, and then volume three, and it's just nice. Yeah. So and and to get you know to play a part in changing it a little bit, mm -hmm. that that really meant a lot. So uncanny five for me. I'm gonna go through here. And see what people chose. Captain Marvel grew epic collection one day, Brian. Yes, one please. <laughs> X-Men Volume 5 easily. Uncanny X-Men Volume 5, X23. Lars, get some social media up for Mad Norwegian Press. Oh, okay. well, that would require me to find time to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. You need but a guy. Namor Epic Collection. That was really okay. Yes. X23, Uncanny X-Men 5. X Men twenty X Men and X twenty three Cap Marvel and X twenty three Uncanny five Thor and Daredevil Omnibus Yes Uncanny five No Oxmead Pete You did not miss any nope. Iron Man epics I nope. promise Only X twenty three Unfortunately oh. You mean fortunately for you though oh. Uncanny five and X Men Legacy Lex Legacies X Men Legacies It's the epic collection Oh right, right. I'm sorry. Sorry, I got excited. I'm like, oh, X-Men Legacy. <laughs> one day, one day. One book on Kenny X-Men 5, X-23, <laughs> and the Epics and the Mighty Marvel Masterworks. Omar, once we get the catalog, how long do we have to wait usually for pre-order? Uh, this will be available for pre-order next month. So like uh, Cheap Graphic Novels, Walt's Comic Shop, uh, wherever you pre-order books. Usually book market, like Amazon and places like that, will already have a placeholder for these things anyway. But if you want to lock it in, yeah, I think I discovered recently that Amazon won't solicit anything more than nine months out. So uh, anything anything that's beyond that period, it'll have you have to wait a little while. So Genesis Vell by Pat would be my favorite if I didn't have all those comics. Uncanny five, Daredevil two, Thor four, Namor three. Interested in that Daredevil two? Be good, Tapsy Logic. He's got to wake up in three hours. Uncanny 5, Thor Omni 4, Silver Age Daredevil 2, Uncanny X-Men 5 for me. Yes. 
and Uncanny Five, Jumping Jack Kirby. That was not Jumping Jack Kirby. Yeah. One so issue a day. Jolly so Jack Kirby. Hard mode. I'm either reading several, getting in groove, or forgetting and read it entirely. Ah, you I are tried, a true that. Not related to King Kirby. Okay. King Kirby. Do you think New Warriors will ever get their own epic collections? 100%. Yes, I do. Boo, X-Men. You're dead to me, Warren. <laughs> Uncanny X-Men Volume 5. <laughs> That's right. Curtis, are you going to have an after party? Are you going to have an after party, Curtis? Am today? I no, I'm not I'm not, not today. today. I didn't get an invitation. so I didn't do it. I usually have been trying to do after parties after we do our epic announcements, but uh, I didn't do one this last time because we were waiting for the August ones. Um, yeah, so it's very What's going on with August is that they are working – so PRH works differently than any other company that they've worked with before. They are – how do I put this? I don't want to say demands because that's not the right word, but there are certain criteria that they have to meet. Yeah. I'll put it like that, that they have to focus on that to get that out there, plus presentations. So – I have a list, so I'm, I'm just going to ask if, if it's okay just to even announce the list, and we can look at covers later um, and get content later, because it's fun just to even guess the content. Uh, I know he does. Uh, David usually doesn't like that because he likes to put things out there, but again, I'm going to ask, because um, it is a lot of fun. The last, remember we did that, Curtis? We did, like, Holy sometimes we had a volume number, sometimes we had just a title, and then we had to work yep. off of that. For all three... Your favorite Roger Stern run, your favorite stories that John Byrne drew. That's a good question. Uh, favorite Roger Stern story is definitely uh, Triumph and Torment for me. What about you guys, Roger Stern? Um, I really, really like um, when the Masters of Evil attack the Avengers Mansion. Right. In Avengers. The Siege. The Under Siege. Under Siege. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a good one, yeah. man. Good choice. Lars, uh, I, I'm, I'm just looking up quickly to make sure I'm getting the, the title. The, 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 the boy who loves Spider-Man and the boy who... Oh, great one. Yeah, oh, who likes Spider-Man. Spider -Man? Likes... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who likes Spider-Man? Yeah. That one is good. That That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one, brother. Uh, and our favorite John Byrne, uh, for me, is that Savage Land um, Storm. Because, oh my gosh. <laughs> that issue was... <laughs> uh, yeah. That one. Burn, Burn has such a wide number of hits. I'm not implying like he's the best thing ever, but you know, not only do I love his X-Men run, his Alpha Flight run is good. His She-Hulk run is really interesting. Um, he's had such a number. I, I have a hard time picking one for him. Yeah, that's really hard. Um, I think I will go with X-Men though. Classic. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there, there's something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there is something strangely unbeatable about you know his run on X Men, but setting that aside. But I mean, well, if you I, you have to kind of factor in, I think, um, if he's an the writer as well, he draws do. differently if he's the writer than if he's if he's not. And his Fantastic Four is absolutely great, and one of my favorite issues is I can't remember which issue number it is, but. Um, and it's a big spoiler for the run, so I might not say I can't say what it is, but Doc, I think Doctor Octopus attacks them in a, in a hospital at some point. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking oh, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. that issue is just so fantastic because uh, fantastic be because because he's the writer, he knows exactly how he wants to convey the emotion in that issue, and it works really, really well. And I think that he doesn't do that the same way when he's not the writer. I think it helps to be a co-plotter too, but, because when he was co-plotting wow. X Men, he was not. I mean, oh my gosh, like the Dark Phoenix saga, the uh, even Days of Future Past. I think he was just having fun. Uh, when he was doing Alpha Flight and She Hulk, I think my I think my favorite era though was the Fantastic Four. Like towards the tail end of the Fantastic Four, I think by the time he got to She Hulk, he he really perfected his art style. Because he kind of lost me a little bit when he went over and did like Next Men, like he was doing that art style. It's a little, a lot more sketchier, which is which is what he's turned it into now, which I still enjoy. But that stuff. Was he that inking it, himself for Next Men? Yeah, he was. So. Okay. But he was also inking himself a lot too for the uh, She Hulk and Fantastic Four. So it was yeah. just the finding that balance of like John Byrne inking John Byrne, 
and John Byrne inks by Terry Austin. Yeah. yeah. There is, of course, a phase later in the 90s where his art kind of starts to go into decline compared to what he could do. But I did just buy, it was $18. So I bought Superman, Batman, um, um, Generations, Omnibus mm -hmm. that he did. Because I'm like, well, it's 18 bucks. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, yeah and even that stuff, I think, it, by then, by that point, he had reached that sketchy level. Um, it does get sketchier the more. But, time, yeah, yeah. But to me, it was like, yeah, I think She Hulk. I think that's when he got it. That's that was that was peak John Byrne for me. Um, Byrne's and, not what you would call a particularly funny writer, and yet She Hulk was funny and clever and meaningful all at the same time. So some of that humor is not dated well, but some of it really has dated well. It's yeah, I love that She-Hulk run. What did I see recently? You know that meme of the dude checking out his wife's twin? You know, oh, right. the popular meme? Yeah. Uh, somebody yeah. posted that apparently John Byrne created that meme because he did that joke in She-Hulk. It's somebody checking out She-Hulk when he's walking oh, holding hands with Jennifer oh. Walters. Right. I, I don't yeah. remember that, but I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that run of She-Hulk. I'm a big fan of his run on She-Hulk. Sensational She-Hulk was a lot of fun. Yeah. And really, you know, the spirit of that is in the show. I mean, it's obviously written a lot different. In modern well, particularly when she talks to the audience. I mean, that's yeah, that the fourth wall breaking and all that. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, before everybody leaves, don't forget to smash that like button. This was a lot of fun. Thank you to David Gabriel. Thank you to Marvel yes. for sending us this advance notice. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a list from David or the go-ahead to do it. I'll be at New York Comic Con, but I don't care, dude. I can still do it live from there, Curtis. We can do, we can have a party and talk about the August epics. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and if you're watching this later, please don't leave a comment. Let us know what you're most excited about. And... So I never answered a question about X23 to bar. That's going to be available, um, let's see, on – it should be next month. So it should be November when that will be available. for Oh, uh, October. No. What the heck month are we in? We're in October. Yeah. It will be available. <laughs> no, Soon no. to be October. <laughs> We're looking at the solicits for January. So that will be – these will be available for pre-order in late October, early November. That's what I was getting at. Sorry. Dates, years, so confusing. Do we know the story on the Predator Omnibus? That's still coming. I'm going to take a picture to share on my social media of all these books that are coming. I swear they're coming uh, because I got a bunch of boxes in and I've been doing a lot of reading. And a lot of these books are going to be uh, coming out in October. So, yeah. And that's it, everybody. Uh, at this time, I want to thank my wonderful co hosts Curtis, where can people find you, buddy? Just do a search for Epic Marvel Podcast. I'll be there on most social media. I Two new things that I started, actually. I started a, a Discord server that uh, mm -hmm. if people just want to talk about the epics or the comics or whatever, they can join me there. That's where I'm also tracking my Star Wars read-through. So I try to post my thoughts on whatever issue I read for the day. I'm a little behind. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, st I started a Substack. Do you know what sub Substack is? It's like a mailing list I slash do. blog yeah. type of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know that Jonathan Hickman started, and it was a big uh, who, who, hoorah. Yeah. Which, which, community. which means, Curtis, that you're, of course, getting rich off it. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like Jonathan Hickman. Um, but if people want to just uh, hear my thoughts on comics, some more thoughts on comics and whatever, you can just, I think, Curtis Findlay dot substack.com i think that's what that is you can okay. sign up um try and do a little weekly mail out or something like that so yeah awesome and lars where can wow. people find you buddy uh i'm available on mad uh as ever we do a lot of doctor who stuff we have just uh filed with the distributor we're doing um our about time series we're doing a second edition of the tom baker volume which is now so big we've had split into two volumes for that second edition. Um, and that'll be out. Uh, well, the release dates get a little screwy, but it'll, it'll probably be available to buy in March and then later in June or something like that. Um, they're not for pre-order yet because I filed with the distributor and then I have to wait for them to process things and send it on through. And it's just twiddling your thumbs a lot. So yeah, talk to about time. Um, second edition of volume four. Okay, excellent. Nice. And 
uh large and i and maybe curtis and maybe a couple other people might come back to do a show on x-men like the yeah. recent x-men uh books would be a lot of fun um so thank you everybody check out cheap graphic novels.com that's our sponsor for this part of the episode they're based out of the u.s and if you tell them near mint condition sent you their way and you get free shipping on your next order and that's it everyone stay healthy and safe out there yeah. don't forget to come back for uh saturday for the big giveaway so yeah. bye everybody have a good day